Dr. Ho and I put together this educational video for physicians and healthcare professionals on MR-guided breast biopsy. The general principles about MR-guided breast biopsy illustrated in this video apply to any equipment commercially available. The equipment shown in the video is what we use at our academic institution and is listed here. We have divided the topic in five sections for easy reference. The first section, general concepts, is a general overview that can be of interest to radiologists and physicians referring the patient for the procedure. The remaining four sections are for radiologists. The basic biopsy technique is an overview of the entire procedure, and the following three sections have technical tips and tricks for radiologists that perform the procedure. The duration of each section is shown here, and the links for each section are listed in the YouTube description of the video. This video is Section C, Tips and Tricks Part 1, with finer point on preparation for MR-guided breast biopsy. Let's review finer points that should be considered in preparation to an MR-guided breast biopsy. We recommend a pre-procedure approval step at time of scheduling. At our institution, the radiologist scheduled to perform an MR-guided breast biopsy is asked to review the diagnostic breast MR and plan the biopsy in advance. The radiologist reviewing the case needs to make sure the target has been appropriately worked up, that MRI is the correct modality to perform the biopsy, and decide if contrast is necessary. If the target and or anatomical landmarks are seen on non-contrast imaging, contrast may not be needed. The radiologist reviewing the case and approving the MR-guided breast biopsy protocols the biopsy exam in our radiology information system to guide the MR technologist the day of the biopsy. The protocol specifies breast side lesion location with image number, approach, need for contrast, and any pertinent additional patient's information that may be important for the procedure. Planning an MR-guided breast biopsy means to be aware of the challenges encountered in this type of procedure. We're usually dealing with a small and vanishing target due to the transient nature of the enhancement, so it may be difficult to see the lesion throughout the procedure. Tissue and lesion may shift while removing the obturator and placing the biopsy device, resulting in sampling of surrounding tissue. It is also difficult to insert the needle within a lesion as the device is not fired when used in MRI. Artifacts related to the device, biopsy cavity, and clip make it difficult to confirm adequate sampling and document clip placement. Additionally, targeting and sampling cannot be visualized real-time, and there is no specimen radiograph. To overcome the challenges intrinsic to this procedure, careful planning and preparation are important to optimize positioning, efficiency, and sampling. Keeping the procedure short within 20 to 30 minutes improves success rate. A longer procedure interferes with the ability to confirm lesion sampling and targeting due to the vanishing nature of the finding and additionally may result in patient motion that further compromises accurate targeting and sampling. If a facility performs MR-guided breast procedures, it's easier to have a dedicated team and or a process to ensure that everyone involved is trained and has the required skills. We have adopted a procedure checklist to help training new team members, residents, and fellows. The top section of the form is to record information about the patient, technologist, radiologist, and date of procedure. The form has four main sections. A pre-procedure checklist ensures that the MR technologist has verified the information and prepared the supplies necessary for the procedure. Biopsy supplies and tray setup section 
is designed to ensure that the necessary supplies are organized consistently for every procedure and that the technologist follows the appropriate steps when opening these supplies. Instructions for the pathology form and specimen container are followed to avoid interprocedural variability and possible errors. These sections of the form are completed by the technologist doing the procedure. The radiologist feedback corner is uh, designated for the radiologist comments and feedback on the procedure to ensure continued progress. Comparison of the diagnostic breast MRI on the left and the biopsy MRI on the right shows a difference due to immobilization of the breast in the coil during a biopsy. As the appearance of the compressed breast may be substantially different from the appearance of the non-compressed breast, anatomical landmarks, additional findings, and extra mammary structures should be used to confirm the correct lesion has been identified for targeting and sampling. The diagnostic breast MRI on the left shows the enhancing lesion to be targeted in the center of the right breast, close to the edge of the breast tissue and retromammary fat. It also shows a few enhancing foci posteriorly in the same slice. The MRI with the breast in the grid shown on the right shows the lesion more vague, the anatomy of the breast parenchyma and retromammary fat, and the small enhancing foci, confirming that the lesion to be targeted has been correctly identified. Extramammary structures such as the heart, chest wall, and liver can be useful anatomical landmarks as well, keeping in mind differences related to positioning and respiratory phase. Several concepts are taken into consideration when determining the approach to biopsy a lesion. The main principle is to use the approach with the shortest distance between the lesion and the skin surface. The lateral approach is the easiest and therefore preferred. When the lesion is closer to the medial side of the breast, a medial approach may be considered if possible. A cranial or superior approach may be available in some coil and MRI scanners. Let's look at some examples of lesion location and possible approach. For a central lesion, we can place a single grid and plan a lateral approach. Or, when lesion depth is hard to predict, we may consider placing two grids, one lateral and one medial, and use the approach with the shortest distance from the skin. Bilateral breast biopsies are usually performed with a lateral approach. Imaging is performed simultaneously and sampling sequentially, one breast after the other. For a posterior lesion, the lateral approach is the easiest. Posterior and posteromedial lesions in particular may not be accessible with medial approach due to the chest wall, sternum, and inability to mobilize the medial breast in the coil. For an anterior lesion, consider placing two grids and use the shortest approach. Also consider using a blunt end needle and possibly half sample to overcome the limited breast thickness in this location. Let's review some concepts about patient preparation and positioning. Preparing the patient before the day of the procedure is very important because a breast MRI biopsy is a significant, often stressful and scary event for a patient. Patient can be informed with brochures or directed to online resources. The American College of Radiology and RSNA have extensive and outstanding informative material in various formats such as articles, question and answers, and videos. These online resources are also helpful for trainees to learn how to communicate with patients undergoing a diagnostic exam or a procedure. Among the preliminary instructions, we tell patients to consult their physician and discontinue anticoagulant or anti-aggregant therapy five days prior to the procedure, if possible. 
The day of the procedure, a full explanation of the biopsy steps should help the patient understand what the procedure entails and improve her ability to collaborate with positioning throughout the procedure. We also want to explain to the patient that the lesion may not be visible, in which case the biopsy would be canceled and the short-term follow-up most likely performed. Additionally, in selected cases when we anticipate the possibility of placing a clip only rather than doing a biopsy, we let the patient know that in advance. Positioning may be performed by an MRI technologist or a mammography technologist familiar with prone serotactic guided biopsy. The radiologist assistance may be um, helpful in selected cases. The patient is placed prone on the dedicated table with the breast of interest in the grid as described in the basic biopsy technique of this educational video. Padding is used to keep the patient comfortable and may be adjusted depending on the lesion location and patient body habitus. It may be decreased to lower a posterior lesion in the coil or increased to lift the anterior part of the breast when dealing with an anterior lesion. The patient is often positioned with arms up. Arms down position may help for a posterior lesion as it relaxes the pectoralis muscle and facilitates the breast to fall into the coil. In some cases though, if the lesion is too close to the muscle, the arms up position may be better as it may help to pull the muscle away. It is important to immobilize the breast to avoid target displacement, skin tenting, and parenchymal shift during the biopsy. The goal is to achieve controlled immobilization and avoid excessive breast compression. Excessive breast compression may be uncomfortable and difficult to tolerate for the patient and may even compromise contrast inflow and cause lack of target enhancement. Lack of target enhancement may be due to contrast extravasation, easy to recognize, or excessive breast compression, or differences in hormonal status. If lack of enhancement is noted and excessive compression is suspected, the breast compression should be decreased and imaging repeated. If the target lesion remains unseen, the biopsy should be canceled and the short-term follow-up should be performed. This concludes the tips and tricks part one section.